Okay. Welcome to Whatever Wednesday. I'm your host, Jeremy, back with Nathan Pache. Uh, just going to go ahead and talk about a couple things that he's got going on now that he is retired. Uh, if you listen to the Monday Motivation, he talks about how he got to where he was and things like that. Uh, if you haven't listened to that, go back and listen. Uh, but now we're going to go ahead and talk about you know, life after uh, you know, professional sports, uh, how Blue Toad Wiggle or the wiggle Don't came worry. about, <laughs> and we'll, we'll we'll go from there. So, uh, welcome back. Thank you. Um, we uh, it's following. We just wear the same shirts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we should have switched hats. <laughs> I'm retired. I get to just I wear the same stuff every yeah. day. Yeah, <laughs> he's like uh, Steve Steve Jobs. No, who's yeah. the one who died? Um, was Steve Jobs right? Yeah. yeah he's, Jobs. He, no no uh, no important decisions to be wasted on shirts. <laughs> he wore the same shirt. Every day. Uh, so, anyways, uh, now that you're retired, you are uh, you are selling bio steel. You're like the sales rep. Yeah, for the East, East Coast, basically, yeah, East Coast manager for pro sports and for pro sports. So, NCAA and stuff. yeah, so you're you're going to be going uh, back and forth, uh, you know, all up and down the East Coast and working with different professional teams to uh, get them to get into bio steel, yeah. which uh, is. I, I, I'm not even saying this. It's delicious. Yeah. Um, it and it's got zero sugar. And you said they are really big on just making quality, uh, high-end, using high-end products to make it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's all it's the top-end products. It's NSF certified, which obviously is more expensive to make, but it's what people want, especially athletes get drug tests and stuff like that, so they have to know exactly what's in their products. And so whatever we put on a label, it's 100% guaranteed, essentially, oh, wow. with that label. So That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I don't get drug tested for any of the sports <laughs> that I do, but uh, it's well, good to you know. know what's I'm in clean. It. Yeah, <laughs> I'm clean. <laughs> um, and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll break open one of these. This is the Blue Toad, uh, the Wiggle Raspberry. And uh, let's, uh, let's get into – this is a funny story. Um, let's get into – Hey now, don't cry. Yeah. Um, well, cheers. Cheers. Thanks for uh, thanks for doing this. Um, and this is delicious too. This is uh, Blue Toad is a cider company that. Uh, you, how how do you know them? Uh, so, one of the kids on my hockey team that I coach and my assistant coach, he is the master brewer at Blue Toad in Rochester. So he brews all the stuff that you'll see in Rochester and area. He makes up these. And at the end of the last season, we kind of had a team get together and all of a sudden they kind of presented this. They put it, uh, they made my own label and stuff. They knew this was my favorite flavor and it was very nice of them. And I think they're gonna be going on sale soon. These are the prototypes originally and I think you'll be able to buy them. I, maybe you are already. I know that it went through with uh, New York State a couple of months ago, so. Yeah, so cool. So what 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 is the Wiggle? So the Wiggle is, my son's celebration essentially my son for whatever reason since he was seven years old when he scored a goal he just i don't know if it just burst out of him he'd do like this shimmy wiggle thing <laughs> and his boys started calling the kellen wiggle and fast forward to my last season all all the boys you know there was pat and his move they i was their coach and they said coach if you ever score you have to do the kellen wiggle and then i promised kellen i would and not thinking that like I was almost done. I knew I was almost retired. <laughs> I wasn't playing. I really didn't anticipate scoring or barely even. I thought I was done playing for that season. And I got into a game. We had a bunch of injuries and call-ups. And I ended up playing center for a game, which I had 17 years. It was first year I was playing center. And, and so I get into a game in Cleveland. And sure enough, I score a goal. And the first thing I think, I'm like, oh, man, I got to do the wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> so I do the wiggle, and uh, obviously it was on TV, and they got a screenshot of it, and it kind of went a little viral in the area, and they, they made a label out of it. That is awesome. That is really cool. That's a cool story. And now, I mean, is uh, Kellen had to be super stoked about that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Except uh, on the news, somebody uh, called it to shimmy, and he wasn't too happy. He's like, it's the wiggle. Don't, don't misquote it. <laughs> he was upset. <laughs> So definitely don't misquote it. It is yeah. Kellen Wiggle. Nice. Um, now you, uh, you, you with with Blue Toad and all that. We've we've gone there uh, a couple times. Uh, you said it's going to be on sale. Um, you know, check it out. I don't know if they can buy it. If, does Blue Toad have a website? I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they have a website. Yeah, I'm, I'm a member. I don't know if the Wiggle month. would be on there yet, but yeah. I mean, all their stuff's on there. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, now. Going just just uh, rewinding back to when you did play, when you signed your first contract, did that change your life like drastically, or were you always in the mindset like, hey, you know what, 
like because in recent news you see you know players they you know are in trouble with with money and stuff like that and you're like how do you how do you run out of money when you're making x amount is it is it the lifestyle that just gets out of hand sometimes yeah it's difficult it's there's a lot that comes out of it you go from you know paycheck to paycheck all of a sudden you sign this major contract and you don't really have to worry about paychecks anymore you don't even look at them and guys get wrapped up in different things and then people different people take advantage of that and it's unfortunate you see a lot of these guys going bankrupt and stuff it's it's difficult to navigate through the waters it's it's really tough you, guys are young when they're 22 23 24 years old and this happens so right. it's, it's a lot of pressure yeah so I, I was just i was i was thinking like man if you know if, if you ever make it big like is it is it just like hey you know splurge a little bit but always kind of just like in the mindset say like you got to stay below that is that is that what yeah. you did like because i mean like you're 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 you know you 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 moved on to a different uh you know avenue but you're you're pretty good right you're yeah, not, you're yeah not I was, you got to be no you got but you got to be smart with things it's tough i mean it, it's difficult to navigate through that and a lot of guys have i mean i'm not at the same length of career as some of those guys in the national hockey league so i'm a little different boat but it, it is shocking when you see find out some of those guys get bankrupt but they just I think a lot of it comes from got people wanting to mean well and help so many people, and then yeah. they don't realize, uh, you know, that at the end they end up hurting themselves. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. No. I. I, I just. I, I. always imagine. I was like, man, if I ever made it big, you know, like it, you. You go through that. Like, who am yeah. I going to take care of? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it, <laughs> you know, it was funny. I'm, I'm driving with my wife and down the highway, and we saw the Powerball and the Mega Millions, and she's like, oh, well, we'd have to take care of this. We'd have to do this. I'm like. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, why are you spending all Already, this money? Already won. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why are we spending all this money? She's like, well, you can't take it with you. I'm like, yeah, but That's it's got to last. <laughs> She's like, listen, you know, $850 million will last. I'm like, all right, good point. <laughs> uh, so now moving, moving uh, you know, we went back a little bit into playing. Any, any big moments that, that you're like kind of will always stick with you? Uh, probably two biggest ones that my well my first NHL game, um, but probably my second NHL game probably sticks out more because that was Game Seven, the Stanley Cup Finals. I was uh, gonna say I saw I saw that it, it I, I was again doing homework and it said that because a lot of uh, injuries you you got called yeah. up Game Seven. Yeah. Uh, I I don't I don't remember that particular. Did we win? We lost. Oh yeah. And we we I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge Sabres fan. <laughs> so so I uh, yeah it was, it was we yeah. uh, we lost. Oh damn. Yeah, I lost to Carolina the year Carolina won the Stanley Cup. Oh, we lost right. in Game Seven in Carolina. I played that Game Seven, so that was a crazy, crazy, crazy experience that one. And it came kind of sudden, like you said, a bunch of injuries, and then winning the Calder Cup uh, both times and. Probably the second time when I was captain and I was I went up and got presented the trophy and was able to hoist the trophy with my my wife and kids on the ice. That'll probably go down as the best moment of my career. Yeah, and I there's there was a bobblehead of you in Grand Rapids. Yep, I'm a little pissed off with the Americans because uh, <laughs> bobblehead night bobblehead night happened. was canceled yeah. uh, for the time being. I and yeah. actually I was called to, they called me to renew my my membership and I said I I'm waiting for this bobblehead <laughs> and they're like sir I promise you we're gonna have it it's it's gonna be like another night but I was like all right yeah. I was like just making sure <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean it's just it's it's tough right now because there's no fans right and right. it was literally what a week and a half before the season yeah. got canceled yep <laughs> so yeah they have to wait and hopefully do it properly but the bobbleheads I'm sure are all in they must have been yeah. oh no they are warehouse. they said they said there's there's tons of them at the office yeah, yeah I was talking to the guy for like a half hour just yeah deciding if I'm gonna renew I renewed <laughs> uh, if you're watching Amherst, uh <laughs> big fans hey Susie uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> but no I uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, where were we? We were talking about uh, oh the moments. Yeah, I I was talking to to uh, Ian and he said that you he was at the game where you played Boston and you took a slap shot. Was it? Oh yeah, slap shot to the head from yeah. Chara. <laughs> yeah, who's known for the hardest slap shot in in the NHL. At, well, for a long time. I don't yeah. know if he is anymore, but yeah, probably he's. One of them, yeah. For sure. So I, I, but he told me about that. He's like, he's like, holy crap! When it, he goes, when I saw that, he's like, I don't know why. He's dead. <laughs> so he said, he said that your helmet was dented and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, I still have the helmet downstairs. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, he hit it right in the head, dented, dented it in the back. So I had to get a new helmet. 
And then uh, the assistant coach was a friend of mine. He was my assistant coach here in, in Rochester before he moved on to Boston, uh, Doug Huda. So I gave it to Hoods and he took it over and Chara signed it for me and said, nice block on it and stuff. Oh, nice block here awesome. or something. I have to, it's downstairs. I'd have to look at it again. And still the big dent in the oh, back of the helmet. That's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. No, I, and when you, when you play at that level, the camaraderie has to be amazing, right? Like yeah. you guys are all like getting together. Is it, is it, Similar with like opposing players too, like you, you become friendly with them, or is yeah. it? There's I, a mutual respect. I mean, the hockey world's small, so right. Usually, you're one or two people separated from every single guy in the league. So you, or you're a guy that's played a long time, and other guys have played a long time. You just you've played each other so many times, even if you never actually talked off the ice, you just have this camaraderie, and you kind of yeah. have this relationship that you have known each other for. 10 years so it's it's just it's cool that's a cool part of sports and you battle battle hardest and but then off the ice you're all kind of friends yeah i and earlier on i i, I mean i don't remember you doing it but you you used to dabble in in fisticuffs right? oh yeah yeah <laughs> it wasn't great ad but yeah when i was younger i mean that was when i first came in i was trying to earn my spot in the lineup so it was a big part of my job i was on the fourth line and i fought quite a bit and it was just you know, it's helping the team, and then obviously I was trying to stay in the lineup, and I was doing what I can. And now, how how because I, a lot of people don't understand. I, I I think it's a it's a it's an important part. I, I actually I wore my uh, my violent or my violent, violent gentleman, gentleman shirt, oh, yeah. the the make hockey uh, violent again. Yeah. So I uh, I love that. But um, how how much does it affect uh, the team when you when you like when you get in a fight or it was a a, a I was gonna say coworker, a teammate, yeah. a teammate, uh, you know, gets in a fight and wins, and you know, it that pumps you guys up, right? Like, yeah, of course. It's not even just about the winning side. A lot of it, the the biggest part of it is you're sticking up for a teammate. It's more that brotherhood where something happened to your teammate and you're defending him. Uh, you're sticking up for him, and I think that more of that emotion of you can't mess with this whole group you mess with one you mess with all of us type of deal really brings a team together and it shows the other team that that as well so i think that's very important and it's it's difficult because sometimes guys get hurt but if you didn't have it then also people get hurt and take advantage of it right right no i i i'm i'm i mean just as a as somebody who watches it like i'm i'm like I'm so sick of people saying like you got to get rid of it, got to get rid of it, got to get rid of it. Like it's part of the game. Yeah, you know, you see, you see football players, and which always makes me laugh is when football players start throwing punches and just punching their helmet. That's, I mean, that hurts. Yeah. <laughs> see, I got a few scars. From, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys punch, but at least you're you're trying to aim for the face. Yeah, <laughs> I prefer not hit. The, I've had enough stitches on my hands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so when when you guys when you guys do that. A lot of it is in the heat of the moment. You guys, afterwards, yeah. uh, there's, I'm sure there's times where you're like, I fucking hate that guy. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, sure. you don't have to name names, but oh, yeah, yeah, I'm there's, sure you There's like, always that guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I usually, oh, for me, it's more heat of the moment. Obviously, there's guys with different roles where I, the stage fighting's really n not into the game as much as it was when I started out. I oh, stage fighting. Stage fighting was guys knew coming in, they're going to have to fight this guy, period. Oh, really? And they would first shift, they'd square off, and they'd fight. Oh. That I don't think that really exists anymore, and and that was a hard toll on those guys. And, and I think it's best that it's that side of it. It's gone just because. It's like the like when Rob Ray when Ty Domi, like they knew they, they had they, to, they knew they yeah. had to fight. And I like I, Andrew Peters is a friend of mine, and I know oh, yeah, like Andrew, yeah. mentally he, he went through a lot, and it, it was very difficult going to the game knowing okay, hockey game I got to fight this guy. Mm. You know, it's not organic almost in that sense. And when it's but when it's. I, I, he never had a problem where one of our teammates got hit and then he went and defended him. And like he loved that side of it. Right. And I think that's what we all do. And But it was definitely mentally tough for those guys. I don't know how they did it. And, you know, you got to praise them for being able to go through that mentally, that mental warfare of the anticipation coming out to it is so difficult. Now, it, it is kind of like a corny question, but ever get star, uh, starstruck? Yeah. Any, any, oh, yeah. Because yeah? I mean, <laughs> like... Yeah. When when I I never like there's certain people I never got starstruck with when I when I met them I was like oh yeah they're yeah. they're they're human like they're really cool and yeah. and down to earth I love that and then there was this one time you're gonna laugh I was walking through to, uh, Grand Central Station and you remember uh, Tool Time yeah 
Um, Love tool tag. El Borland. Oh, geez. the guy who played El Borland. Right, El Borland. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it going that way. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm there. He's doing something, and and he's signing autographs. I was like, "Holy shit, man!" So I got his autograph. I was I was like, "Sorry, I, I had no idea." I no, I've met I've met like Nick Lachey. I mean, I'm really just totally going down the wrong avenue. I met yeah. Nick Lachey. wasn't really starstruck. He was like a really cool dude. I don't know for some reason. I just starstruck with this guy. I was like, huh. "Okay, <laughs> that's funny." <laughs> yeah, the, my biggest Star Trek moment was uh, so Wayne Gretzky was my favorite player. He was my, growing up. I always watched the Oilers and stuff. And my draft, my first draft year, I was in Florida. And I just happened to walk out in my swim trunks, and I was about to go to the pool. And I turned to my right, and coming down was Wayne Gretzky. I'm like, no way! I like jump back <laughs> into my room. My heart's pounding. I don't know what to do. Like sitting there trying to time it so I could walk out yeah. and just like because I'd never seen him face to face before and like I time it perfectly. I come out and I just see him like, "Hello, Mr. Gretzky," and he's like, "Hey," and, he, and then that was it. And I was just like, I was about to faint. That, <laughs> I would have been 17, 18 at the time. And that, oh wow, that okay. was my uh, that was by far my biggest starstruck moment. Very very cool. That I mean that. I, Anybody ever because you you never played when he played right? You're he young. coached against me though. Oh, he did. Yeah. Was he he was with the uh, Coyotes? Yeah, he yeah. was he was uh, he was their coach when I played against him. Oh, that's that's got to be cool. Yeah. Did yeah. you guys win? Uh, I mean, I played a bunch of times. Uh, I'm I'm not sure. I did get my uh, Oilers jersey signed from him though after the game. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> is that is that a thing when when like when uh, you know football basketball when they're when they're you know retiring or even when they're in like. Uh, the later part of the playoffs or whatever, you guys exchange jerseys with with different people. Or? Uh, yeah, a lot of guys do sticks and stuff. Okay, um, I think more of the top top end players. You know, you hear a lot of requests for those guys. The, yeah, you know the Crosbys and all those. Right. Or with the Gretzky. I mean, I bought the jersey and sent it over, and he he that guy was. I mean, just the ultimate ambassador of the hockey, of hockey, and still is. I mean, he would come in every morning. I knew. The person that worked with him, and he'd come in, he'd have his cup of coffee, and all the requests, he'd go around and sign them every day. I mean, he was a head coach wow. of a national hockey team at that time. Very busy man, and still took the time to, you know, take care of everybody. And I, I thought that was pretty incredible. That's awesome. Now, what, what are you gonna do, or, or, or are you just like, I'm, I'm relaxing? I know you, you have your own school, right? Yeah, I got um, my hockey school. Every, every year is it? Yeah, every year, first week in August. It's my own ho- hockey school at Rochester A Center, so I'm still doing <clears> that. I still, like, well, I coach my son's team, so that's busy enough. That's three to five times a week on right. the ice, and then uh, I, I was skating a bit, and we'll see. I'll, I'll try to get more a little regular. Like men's league? Yeah, yeah, we'll see. It's, it's all new right now. I don't know if I'm fully. Right. Fully into the men's league mode yet or not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait until you get like a beer gut, and then you could go in there. Yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> um, and then with uh, with with kind of just like staying in shape, are you are you, have you cut back on the the workouts in general? I mean, yeah. we talked about skating and, and being busy, but like like are you? Like, I'm assuming to be a professional athlete, no matter you know what, you have to be like in the gym. You have to be yeah. doing certain things, staying in shape. Are you going to keep that up? Or are you going to? No, it's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. really. Oh, I, to to do at the level that I did, it's a full time job. I mean, that's right. That's that was our. That literally was my job is to stay in shape. You can't. Right. You can't match that in retirement or with having another job. I'm still working out, but it's not at it's way scaled down. It's at a different level. It's right. just kind of it's, maintenance. Yeah, it's maintenance. Yeah. yeah, it's maintenance. It's to feel good to keep my body feeling good and stuff like that. But to do at the level as a professional athlete, it's. Be disrespectful for me to say I could even come close to what those guys are doing right now. Right, yeah. and now when you when you guys did it, was it was it a, a, a team workout or was it just kind of like you do your own thing with your own like personal trainer? Or, or uh, it depends. So okay. during the, the winter, yeah, we had team workouts and stuff like that, and then in the summers you have to have your own workout group. So I had my own workout group uh, with just different different players. Different players, yeah. Usually whatever city or whatever trainer you had. Uh, my mine was I went to next level all the time with Nate Van Cowenberg and Joe Atari. They were like the best. So. I mean, it was a 40-minute drive. I could have worked out somewhere here, but it was worth it for those two guys. Right. And uh, so we went out there, and I had my workout group that uh, we were together for a long time. I, I was the last one to retire. So it started out with Scotty Nickel, Brian Gionta, Steve Gionta, Ryan Callahan, and I, and we were together for a long time. And then and I was finally the last one to retire just two months ago. We still had the group chat. And <laughs> so that was that was it. I was the last man to fall. That's that's awesome. Yeah. So, um, no, I, 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 I want to just thank you for taking the time 
and uh, I, I don't know if I, I just wanted to chat, see what's going on, and how, how things go. And it's Wednesday. It's whatever, wh- it's whatever Wednesday. You know? <laughs> Hump day. <laughs> so, any any questions from the peanut gallery? No. no? All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs>